Tainted Grail – The Fall of Avalon is an adaptation of the popular board game of the same name with an open fantasy world and a dark storyline that will force the player to balance between shades of grey, making choices that are not always, let's say, good in terms of morale. The events of the game unfold on the cursed island of Avalon, where people arrived in the hope of finding a paradise, but ended up in a hellish earth, corrupted by a mysterious force that chaotically distorts reality. The main concept of the game is to re-sing the legends about King Arthur, where after his death as a nearly godlike entity that was a pillar of the whole civilization, humanity has no choice but to try to find a new ways to exist and what to believe into. I played the Tainted Grail Conquest game, a roguelike deck builder in past, and actually it was pretty good, and the Fall of Avalon was already in my wishlist, so when developers contacted me to play the first game chapter early and even offered to pay me for it, I was like, yeah, why the hell not? So today let's take a quick look on the game and my opinion on it. The setting Game takes place in the alternative universe from the stories of King Arthur. It is said that Arthur, Merlin and their knights led their people from their native country, ravaged by uncurable illness called the Red Plague. They arrived to the island of Avalon and took it over from the Four Dwellers, presumably a race of uh, godlike creatures. But the island itself was also a home to a strange essence, a primordial fog called the Weirdness, which was deadly to ordinary people, twisting a mind and causing inhuman mutations for anyone caught in sight. The power of the artifacts once created by Merlin was keeping the Weirdness away from the human settlements. But as for the events of the game, the King Arthur and Merlin are long ago dead and the artifact's protection weakens, the rudeness is coming and the Red Death Plague somehow made it to the island as well. And if that's not enough, the kingdom is on the verge of a civil war. Your character is a prisoner that's saved by a mysterious mercenary with his own goals. And that's where your game begins. The story looks simple enough to understand, but at the same time it unwraps some mysteries at the proper pace to keep you intrigued, same as the setting itself, the story and the people in it are usually dark. There is no black and white, no annoying savior complex. He was lucky enough to get away from a death sentence in a world that is going down to hell, but that's it. People around are living on the verge of survival, and it feels quite well through the dialogues. The representation of the grim world state is being injected into the dialogues everywhere, so even a simple fetching side quests were taken by me without an urge to, you know, click through the dialogues, which I think is a compliment to the writing. Your attributes, if you pass a check, can open a new dialogue lines and the quest outcomes, similar to how it was made in Fallout series. There is a good freedom of actions throughout the quests, and there are consequences even in some small side quests or interactions. For many side quests, there are no warnings that you may fail a quest now. You should actually think what you are saying to the NPCs, and if you will actually make someone angry, they may not give you a quest and you will not even know about that. This is more like a classic RPG approach, and I personally enjoyed it as it motivates you to actually read through the dialogues. Give it a few years and I'll be left with no teeth! You can try to become friends with a faction to gain access to their temple, or let's say just slaughter them all and grab a key from their leader's corpse. Your choices through small talks may also affect someone's fate. For instance, if you will cover up the drunken city guard at the gates, he will keep his post. But if you will tell the truth to his commander, you'll find him harshly punished for that later. The voice acting is great. Here I was actually surprised in a positive way because I didn't expect this level of voice acting quality from a small indie studio, I wasn't expecting it to even be just fully voiced to begin with. The voices are deep for the tribe leaders, repulsive for drunk city guards and you feel it the voice of an NPC when it's worried or scared. The quality of voice acting is mostly on the same level everywhere. Finally. Welcome to the weirdness. Your brethren cannot step into the fog without consequences. But although I am still weak, I can protect you. 
for now. It's a good. Ah, then it's a good coincidence. I like good coincidences. You can learn a lot from them. That's what my brother says. Grody, dead, alive, what's the difference? I am here. I always have been, and I always will be, until the day I'm released from my service. Truth be told, I'm not quite sure. There is also a large amount of various books, notes and diaries that are either describing the game lore or the daily activities and struggles of the settlers. Which is not something everyone would go through, of course, but good for those who will be interested in a maximum exploration and the lore reading. Music is mostly a gloom, Norse-based tracks and chanting, looking heavily inspired by the work of the Hyrule band. I'll be not saying much about graphics because, well, it is what it is. You will not see the AAA graphics level here, as it's coming from a small indie studio with a pretty limited budget. So I will leave this for you to judge. As for the world building, to me it looks like something similar to older Fable games, but with a grim approach, and I also get the vibes of visual design from the old game Dark Messiah of Might and Magic 2. The world building is done on a decent level, and I personally like this touch of a giant scenes in the game, be it the huge creatures or the leftovers of an ancient race buildings. The base game mechanics and character skills, that's the part of the gameplay where it comes to the direct inspiration from Skyrim. Just look on the lockpicking minigame and interface, for example. The difference from Skyrim lockpicking here is that other chests or doors will have several locks at the same time, so you will need to sweat a bit more to open them, aside from the difficulty of the lock itself. The character developing system is looking very similar to Skyrim too. You have the proficiencies that your master is with whatever actions you are performing. Fighting, casting, crafting, jumping, sneaking, whatever. Then there are attributes, which are increasing your core parameters like damage, mana, crit chance, sneaking protection, etc. And opening the new skills, that would be the perks in Skyrim. The skills to me is kinda on the golden middle for such a game. At the one hand they are simple, but around half also contains the dynamic abilities like restore mana on killing, increase damage at low health, guaranteed weapon crit after casting spell, and so on. It is easy to fail to deliver skill system when you are limited in resources, so better make it simple but good rather than greatly complex but underdelivered and highly buggy. You can build your character into a tank, a berserker, combat or sneak archer, pure mage or a spell sword too, on by any means not complex but still effective level. This may be too simple for veteran RPG players and especially for an RPG fans who played games like Diablo and Grim Dawn, but practically together with the feeling from the combat itself, it is enough to keep combat entertaining to play throughout the game. The leveling system is what I want to point at separately, because to me it is done in the best way possible. It is a hybrid leveling system where you get experience from both rising new skills, how it's done in Skyrim, but also for killing enemies and finding new locations, like it's often done in classic old-school RPGs. The combat is on a medium pace here and feels like inspired by medieval realism games like Mordhau or Mountain Blade, but in somewhat light format. Enemies switch between melee and ranged fighting styles well enough, one scene I actually enjoyed a lot and that was also positively surprised about is animations. Every humanoid and monster NPC has a set of different attack animations, which they use depending on the situation and on random too, and some enemies even have simple but good looking attack combos. This also makes combat more unpredictable and makes you to study enemy patterns to fight them more effectively in melee. Hitboxes and weapon collision feel pretty ok too, and in total this makes combat actually fun even while being simple. You can cook, mate alchemical potions, and craft weapons and armors, and also use services of blacksmiths to attach to socket items. I also enjoyed the recipe system, that you can make most of the potions, for instance, from a variety of similar ingredients as your knowledge grows. 
and you can also discover something when experimenting yourself. The cooking, crafting and alchemy systems are also simple yet effective to make these skills actually useful to spend time and skill points on them. There is a noticeable level of realism in gameplay as well. Everything weighs something. Minimal is uh, 0.1, like papers and lockpicks. Different items of similar kind can weigh different, like salt being uh, 0.1 and floor being 0.3. The dodge mechanic also made with realism in mind. I am not exactly 100% sure, but it either doesn't have this familiar invincibility frame like in Souls games and Witcher 3, or it is really short. This makes you to actually use dodge tactically and not just dodge straight into the enemy knowing you will be saved by the invincibility frames anyway. Sprinting in combat, attacking, blocking and dodging costs stamina too. At the same time this is not too intrusive because on the other hand, out of combat you have infinite stamina and can spring as long as you want. That's a good balance to me. There is also a gear encumbrance system, which directly affects combat the heavier your equipped gear is. Your actions cost less stamina in light gear, in medium armor your dodges are shorter and mana cost is higher, and in full clad of heavy armor mana cost and dodge penalty are even bigger and stamina cost is bigger too, but of course heavy armor provides superior protection. There are also skills you can obtain to reduce these penalties as well. What I didn't like. Probably the main thing is the inability to climb obstacles and lack of collision for some objects and spell interaction for both uh, your character and the NPCs. I personally liked the game world design and was just roaming around a lot, but the lack of proper collision and inability to actually climb or even just jump on many things makes you impossible to sometimes just even get out from the water to a nearby ledge and such situations limit your exploration and forces you to waste time around to get somewhere without an actual need. This also leads to situations that purely melee enemies look completely helpless when facing obstacles and you can easily exploit this in combat. Hopefully this will be added in the full game release. The group enemy AI feels like enemies aggro and uh, help allies range is just way too low, and sometimes you can fight a bandit while his chumba will be just chilling around in like 10 meters from you. To add here though, I have talked to developers and they stated they surely will be fixing and improving this in future. Regarding of what the game release will add compared to the early access from what is already confirmed by the developers, it is several more story chapters and the game will have new stealth mechanics, draw wielding of melee weapons and general combat improvements and also player owned houses, gardening, fishing and other such kind of weekdays activities. Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon has some technical issues, but at the same time it has intriguing storyline, fun combat and it definitely has a soul in it, which made me thrilled to play and explore nearly everything possible in the available early access world space. Considering this game is coming from a small budget limited indie studio, it is a really ambitious project that, for now, has all chances to grow up in a finished good dark fantasy RPG with own twist. That's it fellas and I hope you found this review useful. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our discord to always stay in touch. Stay tuned, stay safe and stay happy. Simitar here, signing out. When making your own choices, you must not forget about one thing. Whatever you will decide, it is you who will face the consequences.